Hey everyone, this is Louis 7 and today I have a general in-game guide for the Fate of Gunabad expansion in the Lord of the Rings Online and the level 140 cap, and for general reference, the Update 31 era. The goal of this guide is to cover general progression and what you can do at endgame and really what you get out of all the content options and basically why you want to do the different contents. So this guide will have a bunch of different sections split into two main parts. So I will briefly show timestamps on the screen and of course on the YouTube video player itself so you can jump to what you are most interested in learning about. If you are interested in a shorter quick list of all the info without the extra content context, please do let me know. Also, while I will present a lot of options in this video, I will point out the general flow for progression is questing, then barter, and crafting, then instances, but we'll have more details on that later. So to start off with this guide, it is best to cover leveling and more specifically questing and deeding. It is no secret that Gunabad has tons of questing content with 7 zones and many deeds per zone. This is very normal for Lotro, but a big source of Virtue XP is going to be the Explorer, Slayer, and Quest deeds in each zone. There is the added benefit that the meta deeds for each zone give Embers of Enchantment as well, which is a generic currency in Lotro used for level cap to barter for things such as armor, essences, and in the past at least, legendary item boost. Now with the new ally system, that is not the case at least yet. So overall deeds are quite valuable but alone are not really necessary for your end game experience, the biggest thing again being virtue XP. For questing, however, the main entrance for progression is getting yourself some starter armor for the expansion. While overall gear with quests and landscape content has been a bit lackluster in Gunabad, there are sprinkles of well-itemized solid pieces of gear throughout the questing experience. The gear from quests ideally will be replaced with better gear eventually, but it does help facilitate the experience of getting started with endgame content at level 140. One of the bigger benefits from questing is with heritage runes. So while much is unknown about the reward track, it will utilize item XP and you can use your heritage runes for that. Because the reward track was delayed until update 31.1 or it sounds like maybe even later now, SSG added heritage runes to quest rewards so you can save the item XP from what you would have gotten from the quest for later as a sort of compensation. Again, details are unclear on how much item XP you'll need for the war track, but you can get tons of valuable heritage runes from all the quests in Gunabad. Also, after the reward track comes out, it is also unclear what will happen to the heritage runes that were given from these quests. So as a forewarning, it is entirely possible they will be taken out of the quest rewards in the future. So one more larger benefit of questing is for reputation. While Gundabad has a lack of rep-gated content, unlike many previous updates, it is still useful to unlock different rep tiers for bartering items. I'll go into more details on this in the reputation section of the guide, but the other benefit of boosting rep is once you completely max out rep with the celebrated tier, you will unlock a weekly Gundabad coins for Embers of Enchantment quest. And speaking of the Gundabad coins, quests also give a decent amount of this Gundabad barter currency, which can be used at the rep vendors, but again, more on that later. So moving on to the final endgame benefit of questing in Gundabad, this is going to be towards the end of the Legacy of Durin book quest, you will get a gold cracked Gundabad tracery barter item. This is quite valuable as it allows you, in combination with ancient scripts that is, it allows you to barter for your choice of gold tracery at the tracery archive in Rivendell. So those are the benefits of questing, and now that that is out of the way, I feel like it's a perfect time to cover more questing actually. This time we'll focus on the level cap dailies and weeklies, the repeatables. For the first time in a few expansions, I personally feel like Lotra has finally figured out how to do dailies and weeklies. The only prerequisite for these is you have to hit level 140, which is the level cap. So once you do that and get level 140, you will get a pop-up quest for a quest called Conquering the Three Peaks. This will have you talk to four dwarf NPCs around Steepset and Matagard. These four dwarfs actually have your dailies and weekly quests. The first one by the Geode Hunter has various dailies to collect resources around Gunabad. I will point out that you must do the Geode Hunting intro quest to actually be able to pick these up, but that only takes a few seconds to do. These can be completed in instances or the landscape. And moving back to the fountain, the next two have instances. The dwarf on the left has three resource instances, 
instances, while the dwarf on the right has two public instances. The final dwarf is inside the Hall of Vernozel, just a few steps northwest of the fountain. He not only has Gundabad Mission's wrapper quest, but he will also have two new weeklies at the level cap. To detail some of these dailies a little bit more, other than crafting mats for Prospector, Forester, and Scholar, the benefit of running the resource instances is yellow and purple enhancement runes, coins of Gundabad, and Gundabad reputation. The same applies to the public instances, but you also get a heritage rune and a health potion out of it on top of just having more quests to do. So on top of quest rewards, the instances have their own set of slayer deeds which give more rewards including virtue XP. In the future, I hope to have a walkthrough guide covering each public instance, so let me know if that sounds useful to you. Finally, for the weekly quest from Zova in Vernozel, one of them requires you to complete 20 of the dailies, and the other requires you to complete instances 6 times on any difficulty level or tier. The weeklies give Virtue XP, Purple and Teal Enhancement Runes, Reputation, Zelruka Allegiance Relics, and finally some Embers of Enchantment. Moving on from the repeatable quests with weeklies and dailies, we can go to the final major type of content we have which is going to be the Gundabad instances. At the time of this video, there are currently only two three-man instances with the first three tiers of difficulty available, but a major goal for this video is for it to still be relevant even after we get more instances and more tiers. So as usual with MMO Endgame, instances generally provide some of the best gear and loot, and this is so far true with Gundabad. At the time of this video, the current loot locks for favor chests and instances, which by the way are the only valuable ones, you really only want to care about the favor chests, this is going to be 5 chests per boss, per tier, per week, for tiers 1 through 3, then 1 chest per boss per week for tiers 4 and 5. Outside of favorable chests, there is not much loot, and it is more comparable to the solo slash duo version, and again, not really worth running an instance if you can't get favored loot. Also pretty standard with instances is higher tiers are more difficult, but give either outright better rewards and or higher drop rates. For gear, tier 2 and above starts dropping purple loot which can be disenchanted into 100 embers of enchantment each. This is better than the tier 1 loot which is yellow and can only disenchant into a few crafting materials. Once tiers 4 and 5 come out for the 3 mains, they are reported to have teal gear, but this is unverified since these tiers are not available yet. For the 3 mains, they also drop new LI legendary item loot. There's no variability in the LI drops, you get enhancement runes or traceries from each boss chest. Quality varies between yellow and teal depending on the tier, with tier 2 assault on Durstrock being their earliest teal tracery drop from the bat riding boss in that instance. Beyond tier 3, the trend of higher quality traceries and enhancement runes is expected to continue. Any future instances, such as the upcoming 6-man that is expected with update 31.1, which is actually in beta at the time I'm recording this video, and eventually the raid, which is expected perhaps for as early as January, at least early 2022. Anyway, those things will likely follow a similar pattern with higher tiers giving better loot, while lower tiers can have a small chance at something useful like essence boxes or gear drops that may not necessarily be upgrades, but can at least be disenchanted into embers of enchantment. This is the same format that the previous expansion with Menace Morgul and level, all the level 130 content followed, so we can expect something similar in Gundabad because it appears to have worked out well for the game. Now, if you are going to be looking for more information on the instances themselves, I have a starter guide for each Durstrock and Puglock, the two three-mans I will link in the description, and will of course cover each instance individually as new ones come out. Moving on from instances, there is actually one final piece of content with Gundabad which is geode hunting. Geode hunting is similar to flower picking and north of filling in the waste, but way less necessary for gearing and endgame progression. The main reason to bring this up at all is there is a pocket item reward that you can barter for, which while it is not particularly impressive, it is one of the only landscape options for a level cap pocket item, and it is item level 460. Otherwise, geode hunting is a completely isolated system built to promote gathering geodes while exploring the open world of Gundabad, with a much larger focus on cosmetics, including housing items and outfits. 
Okay, moving on to the second major part of this video, we can finally get to the bartering part of Gundabad Endgame. So one item you have probably heard me talk about a lot is Embers of Enchantment. This is the most valuable barter currency for endgame content in Lotro. For the past few level cap raises, this generic currency has been used to barter for endgame gear, essences, and even ally boost with the old system. While I must admit this embers bartering feels like its implementation is incomplete in Gundabad, it actually has some of the best gear available at the time of this video and in the future will likely remain competitive for entry level raid ready gear throughout the entire level cap as the item level is usually raised every few updates when new content is released. And for some background on the reason this gear is currently so good, even if it was only item level 455 versus instances which can give 460 to 465, it is because it is teal quality and the pieces often have two essence slots which are quite valuable. That said, when we get more group content, the raid and even higher tiers for the instances, it is likely that the best pieces in the game will come directly from drops in the instances rather than from Embers of Enchantment. But anyway, on bartering for teal boxes for embers gear for certain armor slots, especially things like shields and offhand weapons, it is quite valuable option at the moment. Embers gear can also be great to fill a slot that could just really use an upgrade that you haven't gotten a gear drop for. Additionally, you can use your embers to barter for essences, and I would only recommend the purple item level 460 essence boxes if you really do want an essence from that. But overall, I would currently recommend sticking to just getting gear from your embers, actually. For a quick list on how to get Embers of Enchantment, first the meta deeds for each Gundabad zone give 100 Embers, next the level cap version of the missions weekly wrappers to do 15 missions and then there's a second one to do 45 missions, both of those give Embers and are weekly repeatable. Third, there is going to be a weekly quest to turn in 100 Gundabad coins for Embers of Enchantment. This quest is going to be located at the rep vendors and it requires you to get max rep in Gundabad with the celebrated tier. Next up, the Gundabad weeklies, the two weeklies that we get to do the six instances and the other one to complete 20 of the daily quests, those will give Embers of Enchantment as well. So finally, the most farmable way to get Embers is through disenchanting gear from the Gundabad instances. While the instances will be expanded in the future, currently only tier 2 plus of the three mans can drop gear that disenchants into Embers, and we can of course expect this to have a similar trend in the future. There is actually one more source on Embers of Enchantment, but this one is a bit odd and is expected to change in the future. Normally, with a new level cap, all sources of Embers of Enchantment are turned into sources of Motes of Enchantment, and new sources of Embers are created. Well, it seems Standing Stone Games either forgot about or ignored the Craft for Embers quest. So at the time of this video, you can do this Menace Ithil Crafts for Embers quest. This is a weekly crafting quest that requires seven Ember-worthy crafts. These each take one Ithilharn shard, which is the rare crafting material from level 130. In the future, this will likely be properly updated for Gundabad and will be changed to require Sunstone shards instead. Now, the last note I have on Embers of Enchantment is that we will likely get better sources for the barter currency in the future as the expansion and level cap error progresses with new content and new updates. I will cover individual updates in their own video, and if this video ever gets way too outdated, say with update 32 for example, the next major update, I will of course make an updated guide, at least the plan is to do that. Anyway, to get back on topic, we can go ahead and move to the next major section, which is going to be on reputation and its barter currency, silver coins of Gundabad, or I will just call them Gundabad coins for short. Overall, the reputation does not have much in terms of gear rewards. There are pants and bracelets. The pants are generally poorly itemized, but some class slash spec slash roles may find them useful, just as a DPS I have not found them useful. The bracelets lack primary stats, which is actually a good thing due to the inefficiency of primary stats, so these can be a very good option for starter bracelets. In fact, these are better than all all of the purple options that I have come across on my warden, so they have been quite valuable to me. Outside of any cosmetic interests you have, the next use for coins is crafting pieces. These are quite cheap to barter for and do not require much reputation. In addition to that, the recipes are tradable and you could send them to an alt that does not have the necessary reputation or coins to barter for them. I'll talk more about the crafted gear later though. 
So we already talked about converting 100 coins to 500 embers via a weekly quest that requires Max Kuna bad rep. So the last in-game relevant use of the coins in reputation is through Allegiance Relics Barter. This is a simple conversion of Kuna bad coins to Allegiance XP. And that actually brings us perfectly to the next section of this video, which is on the Allegiance for Gunabat and its associated set of missions. I already covered the generics weekly mission wrapper quest to do both 15 and 45 missions a week being a source of embers, but they also do give other endgame relevant items. If you select the crafting box, you can get sunstone shards, the rare Gunabat crafting material. If you select character boost, you can get an additional 1000 virtue XP bottle, and you can get a rep accelerator along with character XP boost which may be useful for an alt. The LI boost gives enhancement runes but honestly it just not does not seem worth it in comparison to the other options to me. But onto the missions themselves, they don't give too much relevant for endgame right now. They give missions currency called Gundabad Mountain Marks and they also do give the below level cap barter currency called Motes of Enchantment. Otherwise, they are a source of item XP. What is slightly more interesting is what you can actually barter for from these missions. There are a few pieces of item level 460 purple gear from the missions for level 140, but like with most sets of missions gear, they are really poorly itemized and even appear to have a lower stat budget for some reason. The only piece I found useful are the shoulder pads, but they're not even that exciting. They were just like something that I could actually spend my currency on. So I didn't have to do the more expensive crafting of shoulder pads or wait for a gear drop or some other source. As far as the wrapper quest for specifically the Gundabad missions, they reward an allegiance relic which can be used for barter or consumed for allegiance XP. Now, moving on to the Allegiance itself, which has its own unique barter currency, not the same as the Missions barter currency, there are a total of three purple item level 460 gear pieces. There is a necklace, boots, and a chest piece. The necklace is generally poorly itemized, while the chest piece works well for DPS at least. And again, these may be useful for you depending on your class, your spec, your role, and of course, what you want to do. And also, of course, depending on what gear you already have equipped. To gain the Allegiance Barter Currency, you will have to level up the Allegiance via these Allegiance Relics that I've talked about a little bit in this guide. Using these consumables will give you Allegiance XP, and each level up you'll get a bit of the Currency Token. So using those and progressing through the Allegiance is how you ultimately get these gear pieces. Otherwise, the Allegiance does have a lot of cosmetics both for housing and outfits. Alright, at this point we have covered all the barter options for gear with embers, geode hunting, reputation, and Gundabad coins, missions, and then the allegiance. As I hinted at in the beginning of this video, a general strategy to employ is to compare all the barter options versus what you already have, then decide what to barter for that gives you the most bang for your buck in terms of efficiently upgrading. But an important thing to keep in mind is what you can get out of crafting. If you pick your barter options out, I advise you compare them to crafted options first and then see if you want to go with just the barter options or go with something crafted rather than barter. So let's go ahead and move on to this crafted gear section of this guide. And first I will cover the general gear upgrades from the jeweler, metalsmith, and tailor. The full set of crafted pieces are acquired via barter from the Reclaimers of Mountain Hold or Gunabad Rep Barterers. The recipes are 15 Gunabad coins each, and they are not bound and do not require rep to use so you can freely trade them, send them to an alt, or something like that. Also, the crafted gear itself is bind on equip, so it is tradable, and it has a base item level of 458 and requires a small number of sunstone shards to craft, which is the rare ingredient in Gunabad again. The crit version is much more valuable at an item level of 460 with a straight translation of just bigger stats than the base version. If you craft an arbor piece, this is a great time to use a universal optional crafting ingredient which guarantees a crit and is acquired, the optional ingredient is acquired from festivals, task weeklies, and as an options from the missions crafting bonus box option, although I'd actually recommend picking the sunstone shard over the universal crit ingredient. So with the crafted gear being item level 460 and purple quality, as I just mentioned when evaluating your upgrade options from all of the barter sources, it is great to compare to crafted options and then determine from there how you want to proceed. For my warden, I ended up only using a couple crafted pieces over questing gear, 
only a few barter pieces on top of that and then i'm waiting mainly for like tier two and three instant drops from the three mans here on out until more content and the gear is released expected with the six man coming up Otherwise, crafting is just as useful as previous level caps and previous tiers, with the primary use being decent offhand weapons, decent shields, and a unique source of most class items being crafted. Additionally, with crafting, consumables from crafting are still quite valuable and used in Gundabad. These aspects of crafting generally have less progression at the moment, though. And just to reiterate, this does include consumables, scrolls, potions, tokens, and all that usual useful stuff. It is still going to be important for in-game content in Gundabad, and crafting is definitely useful with that. So that covers the crafting and final gear source that we have in Gundabad. In short, questing gives gear, then there are lots of landscape barter options from the Gundabad rep, from the geode hunting, from the missions, and finally from the allegiance. There are also barter options for embers of enchantment. Then there is crafting gear which is comparable to the entry level barter options. And finally, the instances themselves of course drop gear. So one question you might have about gear is, what about old instances? In World Chat and LFF, I personally see groups forming for the Wildwood instances and Shakalash the Stair Battle scaled to level 140. Well, these instances do drop level 140 loot, but the item level doesn't scale all that well, so the stats are not as high as Gundabad loot, especially in regards to vitality. That said, due to their teal quality and number of essence slots available, some older instances may drop decent gear for level 140 at the moment. But this will likely phase out pretty soon as we get more instances, more tiers for the instances, and especially the raid in early 2022. Moving on, we can shift away from gear a little bit and cover the next aspect of endgame in Gundabad, which is on essences. While I have covered them scattered about in previous sections of this guide, I will go ahead and just list out all the sources here to have a short list. First off, yellow essences boxes are plentiful. These are acquired from quests and lower tier instant shops. They let you select which essence you want and are the lowest level and lowest quality Gundabad essences, requiring only level 131. The main essences to worry and think about will be the item level 460 purple essences and in the future of course higher item levels and higher qualities. The sources that make the most sense when considering the biggest value for your time and resources is going to be instance drops. I have seen purple essences drop very rarely from tier 1 of the new 3 mans and a lot more frequently at higher tiers and it's actually fairly regularly dropping from tier 2 of the 3 mans again. Opposite to previous expansions, my experience is Essence Acquisition actually outpaces gear acquisition in Gundabad, but this may change as more content and updates are released as a little bit of a heads up, potential heads up, that is. Now, if you do find yourself needing more item level 460 essences and not wanting to wait for instance drops, the next source I would recommend is crafting. To craft these, it only takes a universal solvent, a sunstone shard, and a few regular crafting mats. There is one more reliable source for the 460 essences, but honestly, I would not recommend this. You can barter for the essences with embers as we covered earlier, but the reason I don't recommend this is because there are much more valuable things you can get from your embers with gear boxes. That said though, if you have extra embers and have eliminated those other more valuable options, this still is technically a source for purple essences. Now, in the future, we can expect higher tier and more difficult instances to drop better essences with the higher drop rates as well. And with this, we can also expect the embers bartering and crafting to be updated to include these better essences at, of course, a more expensive cost. That wraps up essences and we can move on to the next section of this guide which is on legendary items. So with the new ally system there are three things we care about acquiring. First is the legendary item XP which is acquired via the same methods as character XP, but the main focus in terms of progression will be on heritage runes. Because these will be used in the reward track and again that is not out yet, I will direct you back to the questing section of this guide for more details on the questing acquisition of heritage runes. Otherwise the short list is the public instance dailies can give a heritage rune and these also drop in instances. Also mobs will randomly drop really low value heritage runes. 
The other two big aspects of the LI system are traceries and enhancement runes. Enhancement runes are acquired doing basically everything in Gundabad, so they are plentiful and there is plenty of repeatable content to get them from. Traceries are a little bit trickier as SSG is quite stingy about giving them from landscape content. Some quests will reward purple traceries, and towards the end of the Legacy of Durnan book quest, you will get a gold crack tracery, Gundabad tracery that is, to barter at the Archive of Traceries in Rivendell. Another source of traceries is the three-man stew drop traceries up to teal quality in tiers 2 and 3. The best source for traceries might actually be old content though. School and library at the Mirrodain the Regan instances, those each drop random teal traceries at their final boss. Series Surma, while quite difficult with our low gear level early in this expansion, it might actually be the best source for reliable gold tracery drops, and it drops from the final boss on tier 2. It is expected in the future that as our characters get higher stats and just better gear as the expansion progresses, that Seri Sermon will become easier, and that is why I think it might be the most reliable method, unless we get new sources in the future with Gunavad. Also, I keep mentioning that the details of the reward track are unknown, but that will likely be a source for traceries in the future. Additionally, future Gundabad instances, as I was just talking about, and the higher tiers of the instances will likely start to drop teal and gold traceries, and perhaps will drop the teal and gold tracery currency so that you can barter for your choice of tracery along with your Ancient Scripts currency, of course. And yeah, with the simplicity of the LI system, while just concerning the level 140 cap, it is actually pretty straightforward, and that really does wrap it up as far as in-game content is concerned with the LI system, and that also wraps it up as far as the super long guide on in-game in the Fate of Gundabad expansion and the level 140 cap in Lotro. Please do let me know if you have any feedback for future content like this, and if you would like to see a shorter, less in-depth version, or of a video for a more focused dedication to a specific topic covered here. As far as this video goes though, I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something useful, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing for more, or becoming a channel member to support the content on all these guides, and thanks for watching everyone.